Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming today and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn. I am hosting today and I'm hanging out with my good friend, illustrator from here, also here, Sydney, Australia, Jeremy Lord. Hello, Jeremy. G'day. How's it going? Hello, everybody. Good. Um, before we kick off, I've got to ask you about um, hanging artwork tips. Do you have any tips for me? I need to hang artwork on the weekend. Um, and Ooh. I've never hung multiple artworks together and I'm trying to figure out if there's like a, like a, not a feng shui, but if there's like a method to it without it looking garbage. Uh, cause yours looks think, good. So thank you. Um, I use actually Photoshop. Really? Yep. I do. This is not I planned. Photo, <laughs> I, yeah, I take a photo of the wall Yep. and then I take my images and I like put like mock-up frames around them in Photoshop. Awesome. Um, and then well. I just like put them up on the wall uh, uh, relatively uh, kind of, I try and measure it. So it's like relatively the right size, Yeah. but then I mess around with the order of it in Photoshop and see what looks good. I could show you actually on my desktop, I've got like a wall mock-up um, PSD and it's just like, it's what's behind me. And I'll just mess around with that. See what looks good. See I what see, kind of like. I knew that I should ask. On. Cause I was just about to go yeah. randomly. Yeah. That's amazing. How good is that? Yeah. I love it. So yeah, Stealing it just means idea. like, yeah, like it's, if you're hanging up, like what well, I've got, like five or six there behind me. Yeah. Um, just make sure they're all in the right order. So yeah, I just, I go on Photoshop and do a mock-up. And mock it up and just arrange it that way. Oh my God. I'm so stealing that idea. That is awesome. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is tips and tricks like this that you can expect today <laughs> on Adobe Live. Uh, what's up, Alessandra? Uh, Johanna's here as well. Alejandro is here. It's fantastic. Uh, we are live. If you've got any questions as we're rolling through, please don't hesitate to throw them in chat as we're rolling along. We're here for an hour with Jeremy Lord. Um, we did a little bit of stuff yesterday, but don't worry if you missed it because yeah. we'll do a quick little recap and then we'll continue on from there. So um, without further ado, um, Jeremy, would you like to take over? I will. Yeah. So um, thanks for joining everybody. And yeah, so yesterday we went through this, the kind of double episode is all about like type, a little bit more kind of graphic design oriented than my usual illustration topics. Um, today, we're going to get into some of that a little bit as well. But um, we started in Illustrator. Uh, and what you're seeing here is where we ended yesterday. All right. So we kind of like skip through this. Um, building this type from sort of basic shapes using the grid in Illustrator and kind of mocking that up to, to get something that feels like homogenous and looks good and gets that kind of 80s cyberpunk style that we've got. Um, in the meantime, I have gone ahead and worked on kind of an update of that, kind of tweaked it, fixed it up a little bit, made it so that it's all kind of nice and, and working the way I needed to. I like that R. Um, yeah, the R is cool. I'm kind of, I kind of like the E and the A as well. It's something like, yeah, just making sure it kind of holds a nice shape, right? So the, the main thing when you're doing something like this is you want to consider the shape of the word. This is an illustration of a word. It's not really typography as such. Um, we're dealing with some of the same principles, obviously, but you want the whole thing to have a nice like image contour, kind of silhouette almost if you want. Um, think of all the great logos that are logo types that are like logos made of, you know, letters and words rather than illustrations. They all have a very instantly recognizable shape that allows you to <clears throat> see what the brand is without necessarily having to read it. So that's the main kind of ticket here is getting something that feels like it looks good. Then we applied using the blend tool, we applied this kind of like 3D effect that's all kind of live. Um, and then I've gone and done the same thing with this little hero add on that has a, a blend and then just this kind of thing. So this is a blend that just has fewer steps to it. Yeah. Um, to get this kind of like neon kind of, you know, retro coming from the background, leaving a trail of, of like itself as it goes along. Um, so this is where we ended up. Then we exported this as a PSD. So I'm gonna close this in Photoshop. Don't need to save it. I've got it all done already there. And here we are in Photoshop with, as an exported PSD, we keep all of our layers that are coming from Illustrator, right? Yeah. So I've got this on a layer, 
that on a layer. I've got that one and that one on a layer. The reason I export these as separate layers is that so that like I can manipulate them later on. So you want to kind of give yourself a good setup to be able to do things when you get into Photoshop. And if you turn these two layers off. Um, whoops, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> so we're sitting now with what we've got basically straight up from um, Illustrator, right? But we want to make this kind of liven it up a little bit, make it feel uh, a little bit more kind of chromey, get some effects going, make it look nice and flashy and kind of 80s and like looking kind of rad and techy. Um, I've also done in Photoshop just before we start a different version of the hero, which is this kind of like 80s script, which I'll, I'll mess around with later on just to see how that kind of looks or not. I quite like this one as well. It fits a little bit better down here, but yeah, I, either one could work potentially pretty well. Um, so first things first is I'm gonna flip the color on the background, start with a nice dark nighttime background where you want that to kind of get those neons popping and those colors going. I'm gonna turn my hero off because I'm just working on the, um, the main text at the moment. So we're gonna give that a kind of a chrome look. That's gonna be the first step here. And then everything else is gonna be adding on to that. Um, so first things first is I'm going to lock the transparency on this main text there. Um, so I can either do that by clicking on this little kind of chess checkerboard up here with the layer selected or forward slash um, keyboard shortcut on your keyboard will lock the transparency on there. Um, then I'm going to go into my color picker and I want a exactly a 50% gray. So rather than try and eyeball it, I'm going to go where it's, it says black here. And I'm going to type 50 and hit return. And I've got a 50% gray. And then I'm going to do option delete or alt delete. And that's going to fill my text with a 50% gray. Nice. Right. Next thing I want to do, and this is more kind of like for future proofing, is I'm going to take this 3D um, effect that I've got. I'm going to drag it out of that group because I only want to be able to, to do stuff to this text and not the actual 3D. So having this in a layer is gonna allow me to do stuff to that. Later on, you'll see why that kind of makes sense. Right now, it's probably like, I don't know why you did that, but trust me, you gotta take that out of there because you want it to be able to do it individually. Okay, so we're gonna go on top of that layer and I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna smack it just on top of that group. So it's the first layer on top of that group. And I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and hover in between these two layers. And you'll see my cursor changes to this little square with like a kind of a down right angle arrow. That means that this layer is now clipped to my work, right? Let me show you what that does if I don't do that. So I want to put a gradient on top of this text, but I only want it to affect the text. So I'm going to go into my gradient tool. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on a foreground to background. Normally, I would work with a foreground to transparent, which is this little guy right here. I want the basic one, which is just straight up black to white. And I'm going to drag from roughly about here to there, holding down shift. So it's a nice straight up gradient. And it's going to do this for me. Whoops. I'm in a radial gradient. I don't want that to be the case. I want to go to a linear rate gradient and do that again, there we go. So you can see that my whole image is now a gradient. That's not great, I can't see my type anymore. So doing that little clipping layer with the Alt or Option and clicking means that that clips to the layer or group are immediately underneath it, All right? And that is the reason why I've dragged this out of it because if the 3D is there too, it's in the same group, it's also getting affected by this gradient and I right. don't want that to be the case. So dragging that out of it means I can keep that looking the way that I need to, All right? Cool. Next up, I'm going to take turn this off for now, and I'm going to kind of give this a little bit of a beveled edge, and that's going to give me this kind of like metallic kind of chisel bevel that I kind of want to have happen here. So I'm going to double click on the layer, and I'm going to go into bevel and emboss. I'm going to reset this to default. And I'm gonna zoom in on my image a little bit so you can kind of see what that's doing. So nice. that's giving it this kind of 3D effect. Cool, so as right. soon as you jump in there and you turn it on, it just has like default settings that, yeah. you know, to start with. 
yeah, so it's giving it this like like raised effect, right? Um, I want the depth to be all the way up to the max to a thousand percent. That's going to give it just a little bit more of like a, a less soft edge. Um, and then I'm going to boost the size up a little bit. So just kind of seeing how it works. I might zoom out just to get, I don't want too much, right? If it's too much, then it looks like it's not going to really going to work and it's not going to leave me enough room. And if it's too little, you won't see it. So maybe about like 20, 25 anywhere around there that's probably just bang on there 23 um next up is i want to go into my um contour and the range normally is set to zero or to 100 sorry but i want to set that down to zero so you can see that my um bevel here this effect is a little bit soft if i bring this down to zero it becomes a little bit harder it becomes a bit more kind of clean and straight yeah yeah uh, and i'm going to take anti-alias as i'm doing it as well um so that's now kind of given me a quick way to get this kind of like chisel but with the nice kind of clean straight edge around all of it so i'm gonna hit return on that and i'm going to turn my layer back on of the gradient and you'll see that that's going to kind of hide my um effect that I just did. So I need to click on that gradient. I'm going to name it. And I'm going to set the layer style or the layer kind of mode to overlay. Oh, overlay is getting a chance. Very cool. Yeah. Usually it hangs around like multiply or something else, right? Multiply like overlay and screen. Instance. Yeah, multiply is like 95% yeah, of the time. Totally. Um, so yeah, so we're getting a nice kind of look going here. I might just go back into my bevel. So the, the cool thing about this is that these are all um, live. Nothing is I destructive. That, I can yeah, edit so this as I'm going. I can change it if I need to. Um, so I can change the angle of the lights. So I can do kind of whatever I want with this. Um, give it a little bit more kind of shine. I was pretty happy with where it was before. So let's leave that to kind of like there. I might just make the whites a little bit bigger as well. When just a little bit brighter just because we're going to get a shine going on it. So we want that to be kind of a little bit clearer and a bit more impactful. So about that, like on that, um, do you need to think about what direction the like light source or light sources are coming from early on, or is it something that you just kind of tweak as you're going through? You can kind of tweak it as you're going through. It depends on the shape of your text as well. Right. Um, because I've got a lot of horizontal and vertical lines here, something kind of coming in from a little bit the side, a little bit not kind of like just dead on the top is going to help me a little bit, but it really depends on the text or the image that you've got going and the overall kind of shape of its outlines. Um, you might kind of get something a little bit different going uh, and you can change the color of it as well. There's a heap of things that we can do here, but we're not going to do this on, on this one. We're going to do something else to change the colors of these things. Cool. Um, if I don't see right, the hue so, and saturation uh, thing pop up at one oh, point. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Jeremy um, Lord stream without it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so next step is this is going to be kind of like the, the main thing that's going to drive all of this, right? This next step is I'm going to add a layer mask or sorry, an adjustment layer on top of this. So I've got my gradient layer selected. If I click on the little kind of circle that's kind of cut in half at the bottom, it's going to give me this pop up. Yeah. And I want to choose a gradient map. And by default, it's going to pull up this black and white one. Now, the main thing I want, as you can see, is it's affected the layer underneath it as well, right? It's my 3D layer here that's green. If I go into this, it goes black and white. So I want to click this little button down here, which does the same thing as I did to my gradient layer. It makes it a clipping to the group that's underneath it. All right? Yeah, got it. Cool. But now I want to go into my options here. So I don't want it to just be black and white. And I've got these gradient um, map settings that I've kind of created myself. A lot of these I've just made myself from different kind of settings. But I've got these chromes in here that Oof. immediately kind of Beautiful. give it this kind of look, right? So I've got like different kind of layers. This one's a little bit colder, a little bit more metallic. This one's pure kind of like desert chrome kind of thing. This one's a little bit more faded. 
there's a, a bunch of different options and settings that we can kind of do with this. It's like a sunset and, and I'll show you how to tweak these going on before. That was cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So that that immediately kind of gives it a little bit more shine as well, right? It's just kind of making it feel like it's reflecting something um, and working a little bit kind of to our favor. But I still want to edit some of this and we can kind of go in and click on this and it brings up this thing happening here. Yeah. So what we're looking at is our gradient that exists that we created is giving us this kind of impact on this particular kind of gradient map. And what it's doing is it's taking, if you want to imagine it in a sense of like, if I go to here, everything that is black is going to white and everything that is white is going to black. So my gradient here has been flipped, right? If I just go black to white, if I pick another color, you'll see that kind of same thing happen. The lighter tones are getting this kind of dark blue and then, sorry, the opposite. So the, we're getting this kind of like tonal shift happening. So why I've done this here is if I don't bring these two kind of together, I just get this kind of gradient and it's not really working super well. So very important, whatever you're doing, all of my gradients have a black and a white or a very, very dark color and a white that line up to get kind of almost zero gradient value, right? They all have this little trick in the middle to give it this like super strong shine effect that we want. And then everything else is just kind of working in that way but so for instance what we've got here is we don't have a lot of dark blue in here so i can drag these kind of blues to be closer to our middle and that's going to bring some blue into the top a little bit more um, same thing here i can drag this pink up a little bit and that's going to start messing around with that um, if i want to get a little bit more of a highlight up here so i've lost all the highlights that were hitting the top of my gradient so i'm just going to click here and bring it in and say i want like a, a light blue and bring that down and you'll see immediately my top kind of bevel is getting impacted by that without hitting the gradient there so that is just kind of something that i can mess around with you can add in as many color points as you want when you're doing this yeah there's kind of no limit to it obviously quite a lot, if you right? start having a lot there is quite a lot for this because I'm I've got you know gradients within gradients and I'm I have to get this effect in the middle here that gives it that kind of horizon chrome shine look. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot of gradients within gradients happening here, um, but it's definitely you know all of this is absolutely editable to to an extent that is almost a, almost kind of too much in some cases. Right. Um, but yeah. That's cool. And how do you go so about I'm like selecting colors, like the color regions and things like that? I know that's probably a whole nother stream, but just preempting what people might be thinking. Cause like these colors like really like harmonize really well. Is there any thoughts on yeah, that? So that, that that's check? just my kind of like color tone there, the blue, pinks and purples. Yeah. Um, but let's say like, yeah, so we're gonna create this one and say, let's, let's save this one for now. Um, this one chrome stream and make a new one and he goes pops back in straight into my chrome and i can keep him for later but let's say um i'm gonna go in with something like this right so i'm gonna go um there's probably gonna be a theme that i want to do so i'm gonna go with like i don't know let's go with like an arctic kind of like nighttime kind of vibe so we want to get some nice cool colors. So really nice kind of chill blue, uh, maybe a dark blue down here. And I'm going to drag this up to here. And then this guy can come in. This is going to be the basis, right? Meet in the middle, get this really kind of clean line happening. Then I can start to go and say, all right, well, I want like a much, much lighter tone up here. Um, this blue is probably a little bit too kind of green. So I want maybe to cool that down a little bit um, and maybe lighten it up a little bit more. Um, then maybe we want like a purple down here, right? Cause it's like nighttime. So we want like a bluish kind of purple. We want to bring that up into here a little bit. 
and then get another kind of tone down there that's maybe going to be a black and and yeah it's basically that's kind of what we're looking at just kind of getting tones that suit a particular theme that allow you to get whatever it is that you're trying to do going in the way that you need it to but there's definitely like a fair bit of trial and error as you can see like i'm messing around with a lot of these things to see kind of how this is going to work or not yeah uh, maybe we'll get a green happening in here to be like weird and wacky some like aurora borealis kind of green give it a little bit more of like an acid feel again that completely changes the tone of the image right we're no yeah. longer like arctic circle now we're in like you know world of warcraft poison lab kind of thing and it's winter like of the veil. Western kind yeah. of vibe. yeah so there's like there's a heap of things that we can do to try and kind of mess around with these kinds of things um and and get a nice kind of looking great and then as as you saw you can always kind of rename this and add it to the thing if you did something that you really like you can always kind of pop it back in there um so we're going to sit with this for now and we've got a nice gradient map happening and that already is kind of looking very kind of chromey and and, and quite cool right um next thing i want to do is i'm going to give this a little bit more of like a a, a bit more style a bit more of an effect happening on this it's a little bit flat it's a little bit too perfect i like i'm getting the metallic look but not as much as i'd like right there's a little bit of like i want like a terminator kind of vibe with this and it's probably a little bit too clean in this horizon line so i'm going to go back to my layer here um and i'm going to double click back on these effects and again, I can always come back and change these. These are all live. As long as they're there, I can, they're completely editable. I can change them. And I'm going to add an inner shadow. And that's going to go in and give me, where are we? Here we go. Um, it's going to give me a little bit of a kind of a interesting effect happening here. So let me drop the size down to zero. And so you can see, so I've got our, my image. And as I make this, more kind of pronounced you see it's starting to kind of wrap the text around the edges making it look just like the light is being bent by the edges of my text yeah it's also impacting a little bit of a on the top here these kind of edges that i got they're getting impacted a little bit by this and catching the light um so that's always a really kind of interesting one to do you also want to be on this idea of like instead of this default straight guy you want this s curve and that's going to make it a little bit more kind of even and pleasant so now i'm starting to get something going that's really quite interesting yeah that's cool um, it kind of gives it like a glass like or plastic kind of yeah absolutely depth yeah and, and that's what we want right we want this idea of like the edges are just bending the light a little bit bending the reflections kind of warping that into something that we're looking at um, now you'll notice that I've got a little bit of an issue here with my gradients a little bit kind of sketchy and I've got this like horrible beveling here I don't want that to be the case I want it to be nice and smooth so this isn't something that you need to think about whenever you're working with these kind of gradients is I actually want to be in a 16-bit color mode and if I swap views here you'll see that i am in my file is rgb slash eight so i'm actually in eight bit which is a lighter file format but gradients tend to be a little bit more kind of layered when you do that right so i'm going to go to my image mode and change that to 16 bits now nothing's going to happen because I'm actually going to have to redo my gradient. So my gradient was done when the image was 8-bit, so it's an 8-bit gradient. I'm going to have to redo my gradient. That's not a big deal. It's a pretty easy thing to have to redo. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clear all of that. That's good. So you can go back in and change the gradient like it's yeah. live as you're going through. And thankfully, the gradient, as I said, is an easy thing to have to redo, right? Um, so that's not like dramatic to have to kind of rejig that one. But if it was something else, like that is something you have to think about. Like if you've done a more intricate gradient that you can't really redo on the fly, have a think about like, do I want 16-bit? Obviously, my image is a lot heavier, a lot more taxing on my computer at 16-bit than 8-bit. But the result here is a lot cleaner already. Um, 
So I'm just going to drag my gradient back down here because the gradient didn't go quite in the middle. So this is also what's quite cool about this is because all of this is being driven by this singular gradient, I can actually make some pretty quick and effective edits to my text by just changing the actual gradient that's there. So if my gradient's not in the middle, I can just drop it back down from the top to make the 50% gray value be more in the middle of my text and that realigns it to get something that I'm looking for, right? Nice. And I've lost that kind of like terrible pixelated edge a little bit there. Now, the next thing is, this is still probably a little bit too even for my liking. I wanna get something that's gonna give it like, this is theoretically what this is reflecting is the horizon line, right? So we don't necessarily want a super flat horizon line. We wanted to give it like, sorry, a little bit of like a mountain vibe, a little bit of a landscape, something a little bit kind of uneven. And so all I need to do now is again, impact this gradient, right? And I'm going to go in with my smudge tool. And I'm going to basically like draw in some mountains on my oh, nice. gradient. <laughs> so it's kind of like the reflection of sunglasses, like, that kind of thing that's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so like you can't see anything unless the gradient map is on, right? Like it's almost imperceptible what I'm actually doing to this, but it's just making it so that it's not quite perfect and even, and just giving it a little bit of that kind of cool, like you said, yeah, that like sunglass reflection, like this is metal and it's reflecting the horizon. Like it's imagine this was on a car yeah. or something and it's like reflecting what's in front of it, Sick. except obviously it's this kind of thing. Um, so that is just a really quick and nice and easy way to do this. If you're all so like me and you want this to be a little bit cleaner like you can see i'm getting a little bit of aliasing happening in here it's not super smooth i yep. can go into my gradient tool uh, sorry my uh, gradient layer go to blur gaussian blur and i'm going to boost the blur value up a little bit and you'll see that start to kind of go away a little bit hopefully it should do Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's yeah, a little nice. bit smoother, right? I wouldn't have thought to blur so it, it to make it. To, I mean, well, it makes yeah, sense blur to take gradient, the, right? Yeah, aliasing away. Yeah. yeah cool. If I hadn't done any smudging to my gradient, that would have not done anything. Right. Because the, the gradient's already as blurred as it can be, right? So blurring the gradient's not really going to do anything. But because I've made tweaks to it and the gradient's not as even as it used to be, I'm getting a nice kind of solid impact happening on nice. that. And it's just a little bit more kind of thing. So already I'm like 80% of the way of getting this kind of metallic shine, kind of chrome look. And again, you know, if I'm not happy with that, I can go back into my gradient map um, panel and like change that to like, yeah, this, right? So now this looks like, you know, American muscle car kind of desert scene, all this kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm happy with where this was. So I'm going to leave it that. Um, I'm also going to change the tone of this, right? Um, because to like match up with this, the blue I'm not loving at this stage. I want it to be a little bit more matched up. So here's our little hue sat panel. And I'm going to drag this over to the kind of the, the blues and purples a little bit. Um, and that feels a little bit more kind of connected to the text that I created already. Um, so yeah, so I've got a nice kind of, you know, black to purple gradient. So it looks like it's kind of appearing from the background and kind of coming out of space a little bit. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. It's not super sitting in the middle. This has been bugging me a little bit from the start, actually. I need to kind of recenter this a little bit. Whoops, I need to select both. And pop that in the middle a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, that's just a, a little bit of a, a designer thing, um, bugging me. It's gonna a bug bit. you the whole time. Now yeah. we're gonna, uh, yeah, yeah. Now we need to do this little kind of hero add-on thing. So I'm gonna take this guy. I probably want both of these to be a little bit, like, bit 
brighter, a bit more saturated, potentially a bit on the green side. There we go. Take this guy, do the same thing. And we want to make him saturated, brighten him up and bring him into the kind of big kind of blue green tones. That's pretty good. I'm going to drop the opacity on this one. And then I'm going to give this guy a double click and I'm going to give him an outer glow and change that color to like a similar to my text there. And change the size. Did you start this one with a font? Uh, no. So this is built from scratch in, in Illustrator. Yeah. Um, just trying to get this, like, this is one super like basic cause it's pixel. So it's just blocks and squares and things trying to right. get this kind of like eight bit kind of thing happening. Um, in fact, turning off that layer, I actually quite like what's happening with that. Maybe I don't need this wacky kind of effect or maybe I can turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Probably cause yeah. it's so thin, right? Yep. Might yep. be a bit more legible um, that way, but yeah, it's still cool. I really like it. I think it's better subtle though. Yeah, I, it is. As right. I armchair, it's just that kind of like. <laughs> um, let's get some pixels going on here as well. So we're gonna eye drop this color a little bit and make sure that we are getting the right effect. And I'm just gonna start filling this in with just a few little kind of additional pixels that are also going to get this glow thing happening um and that's just going to drive a little bit again that style that i'm kind of going for which is like this is arcade kind of thing so we got some pixels happening taking it out of this um we can also probably look at doing some glints and flares which we will do in a tick um but for now i'm pretty happy with all of this so let's get some ideas of kind of a background uh, actually no before we do that let's get those kind of glints and flares happening so i um i have made kind of flare assets in the past um things that kind of work well for me but what i wanted to show you guys is just a quick really easy maybe like a little bit budget way of making your own kind of flare style I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call this flare. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my gradient. I want a nice white and I want white to transparent and I want a radial, uh, don't want that. thank you. Um, I want a radial gradient. And I'm just gonna drag this to like here. And already you can see that's like, even just placing that somewhere is kind of helping me get this kind of like yeah, shine, cool. like pop of shine happening. But I want it to be a little bit kind of better than that. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna hold down option and drag it and kind of reduce that down a little bit to something like this, just like thin it out a little bit. Um, and I can probably reduce the size down to something a little bit easier as well. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to angle that 90 degrees. Here we go and change that. Um, so that's already pretty cool, but I want it to be a little bit narrower this one. So I want more of like almost like a kind of like a cross section here with this. Mm. Uh, and then I can take another one. So I'm just duplicating this, right? Command J and I'm duplicating these and I'm going to put a 45 degree angle one and I'm going to make him like super wide. And then I want another one of these just for a little bit of unevenness. And I'm going to make him a little bit of a random angle. So he's not 45. He's just going to live there like that. Okay. So we've got our kind of flare. Um, and we've got this guy. So I don't want to necessarily keep this guy there, but I will select these and command E and that's going to smash them all together. And then I'm going to do one last little kind of radial gradient from the center, just to add a little bit more of that kind of shine. All right. So we've got a really easy, quick way 
of making this kind of like lens flare glint kind of effect. Yeah, that's cool. And now if I pop this like on something like this, you'll see what I'm talking about where it's immediately gonna give it this like, yeah, that's nice and shiny now, right? Really cool. I'll pop these in places that will kind of work a little bit better. I've kept this one separate to the others because I don't want him to kind of take over too much and I don't want him to be everywhere. So now I'm just gonna duplicate that guy, take him over here, whoops, and just pop a few kind of glints and, and like these kind of flares in different places at different sizes. And like I said, they don't necessarily all need to have this like giant one that's up there. They can just have a, a few that will do that for me. Whoops. That's cool. It adds a lot to it. it yeah, it immediately makes it, the shines kind of like a little bit more kind of pop. It's making my layer panel a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. Let me rotate this one for a bit of variety and stick in there. All right. So, I mean, you can go <laughs> real overboard um, with this if you need to. I guess that's the but, trick. Yeah. Um, how, how do you know um, yeah. it's too much, right? How over the top? Look, I mean, it depends on how like rad you want this to look, right? But it can also be, it can also start to be just a little bit much. Um, so something to kind of bear in mind as well as, you, as you're doing this. But I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's kind of looking as such. And it's just added a lot of kind of that shine to what I was trying to do. So I'm going to bring these guys together and put them into one kind of layer. Um, what I can also do if I want to, if I want like extra kind of impact and effect on this, if I don't want them to be completely white, I can actually lock the transparency on that layer. Go in with like a blue, like a darkish, very saturated blue and come in with my soft kind of radial gradient and start making a little bit of kind of tonal value into some of these glints and getting this kind of like almost like chromatic aberration kind of thing happening. It's not quite chromatic aberration, but just so that it's not completely just white. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a color happening in the kind of the, the texture of that light. Um, and it's reflecting something that's happening to it. And again, you can, you know, you can go a little bit more crazy if you want to with this. You can make it like a bit of a yellowy color. Just get something that feels kind of natural to you. I was quite happy with that kind of blue there just happening there. That's cool. All right. Um, and we can, you know, we can keep adding to this as we're going, but let's move on to um, getting something happening in the background. I'm pretty happy with the text. I want something in the background now. Um, so first things first is I want to kind of create a bit of like a grid, a nice kind of 80s style grid in the background. So I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to choose a uh, kind of a gradient. So I've got a whole bunch of different things in here um, that I have created in the past. I've got this grid here. I'm just going to bring this in as a smart object. And yeah, he can stay there for now. Grid and drag him behind everything. And um, that's good. I'm going to resize him so he's a bit bigger. And I'm gonna rasterize him. Because at the moment, because I brought him in as an AI file or as a vector object, he is a smart object. So I'm gonna rasterize it and that's just gonna make it um, a little bit easier for me. So you just have I'm like stuff that you like use enough that you kind absolutely. of create a library? Yeah, yeah, totally. Whenever there's something that you need to do with this kind of idea, um, it's always, you know, it's a nice idea to just do it multiple, like just do it once and for all, and you can just bring that in. Yeah. Um, it's pretty easy to make a grid in Illustrator, to be honest, but easier to just have it done already. Yeah, definitely. If you um, use it more than once, it's good to have it just on yeah. hand, right? Totally. Yeah. And I've got a whole library of things that I would kind of put in on a regular basis. Um, so we're going to drop the, uh, 
the color of this. We're gonna give it like a a bluish kind of purple tone like that. And that's pretty good, pretty happy with that. And now we can kind of start thinking about like, all right, let's have some fun with this. Let's see uh, what happens if I bring this. I'm gonna transform this, I'm gonna hold down option and this is gonna tweak it a little bit. And my computer's been a little bit difficult. I am asking it to work on a pretty high res file at 16 bits. So it's like, yeah. it's not loving me right now, but um what i'm kind of trying to do here is you can see is like trying to get this like perspective so we can do a bit of a kind of a perspective grid like this and then scale this back down and we're gonna get you know like something oh, yeah. that's looking like this tron. is coming out of a grid yeah like kind of tron vibe so this is living in some sort of like you know inside of a game kind of world thing and you can see that it's taking a little bit of time to do that and take another one and flip it and put it underneath. All right, so kind of we're looking in perspective at, at this thing. Um, something that I like to do as well, actually, is um, put a layer mask on this and hide everything completely. And then come back in with my trusty gradient tool from um, color to transparency and bring in just the grid back in just behind this a little bit so you can kind of see it popping up and it's kind of disappearing into like space behind it yeah so that's a kind of a cool effect that you can do as well um i can also think about potentially doing a um, another gradient behind here so i'm going to keep to my blue and i'm going to go in and do a nice kind of gradient to there we go that's cool and i'm going to stretch this out so i could put a um a, you know a, an effect on it that gives it like an outer glow but i i think in in some cases this is probably easier slash better just to have like an actual gradient behind it that just kind of lights up the background rather than put a glow uniformly around the whole thing yeah um and it just means that you get a little bit more kind of control over what you're doing yeah um so that's i'm pretty happy with that and that's i don't cool. think yeah, I it makes want everything the, pop the out quite a bit and adds that depth to it yeah um and again like you can change that you know all of this is completely non-destructive so you can change the colors a little bit if you want to um in that way um you can make it a purple now and i spoiled this a little bit earlier now we want to do kind of like a background i want some space um in there like a kind of a galaxy or something so you know you could go in and draw this yourself but with our kind of generative fill and i won't do this now because this is a big image and it's going to take a while so i'll just show you ones that i preferred prepared earlier but with a new layer if you do a generative fill here and you just type in like galaxy or like stars or whatever and you hit generate what it will do is it will kind of generate something that's going to look a little bit like this in the background. So yeah, these nice. are 100% just AI generated by Photoshop uh, and they're all light, right? So I can actually change the one that I'm looking for. If I don't like this one, I can do something like this or, or this, or if I want something a little bit more subtle, I've done another one that's kind of a bit more of like a starry night sky kind of thing. Um, which maybe is going to work a little bit better for what I'm after. Um, so yeah, so, so that's kind of like a... I was just going to say, so yep. good for stuff like that. Like I'm constantly just creating new like wallpapers and backgrounds and stuff. I'm like, ooh, abstract pastel yep. like liquid. Let's go and just change it. Yep, totally. It's really useful for projects thing like as well. This is like it, and it actually does it really well. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really kind of fun to, to work with and kind of cool to do it. I've lost, obviously, I've lost a little bit of detail and you can't quite see the grid. So I might just drop the opacity down a little bit on that. Um, and I can also do this thing whereby like, maybe I can duplicate this gradient map that I did on my grid onto my actual starry sky. And then that is gonna make it so that the grid and the kind of the thing are lining up on the same kind of layer mask so that's pretty cool right like there's something that you can do there with that um if i'm feeling like the grid is probably blending in a little bit too much again i can come back in 
and change the the tone of it a little bit so maybe we go for like a lighter blue something like that or even like a green just so that it shows up again a little bit more clearly um and then finally what we can do is i'm going to make a new layer and i'm going to go in with like a light kind of blue tone and I'm going to call this lightning and we're going to get some rad kind of lightning happening so this uh, I probably could to be honest um do this and if it wasn't for the fact that I am working on a relatively big image it's probably going to take longer than we have left you could just do a selection here and type in generative fill and put like lightning bolts right and yeah. see what happens um, so that could be something that we could kind of think about doing, but I'm going to do this the good old fashioned drawing way. And I'm going to put some lightning kind of happening on either side of my artwork here. Save this as well. While I'm doing this and I'm just going to draw it in. So right now <laughs> it looks a little looks bit. Good. Print it um but if i come in with some effects on this you'll start to see what we're kind of looking at here yeah just um, that outer glow just does so much doesn't it always 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 and i probably actually don't want it to be the same color as the lightning i think i want like a bit more of like a darker blue always put my my um outer glows on linear dodge add i just i find that the light kind of interacts better with whatever is behind it as well just a little bit kind of a cleaner way to do it. And I'm gonna give it an inner glow as well um, so that that kind of pops a little bit more. Um, choke it a little bit. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's cool. looking all right. Uh, maybe I want the outer glow's opacity a little bit higher. Yeah. There we go. That's that I'm happy with. And so we can, yeah, we can start to kind of muck around with getting some kind of effects of kind of lightning. And because you've this. applied that to that layer, you can just draw now and it'll apply the yeah, and it's outer just glow be live. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Obviously, you want to kind of maybe do this a little bit more accurately than I'm doing. You can always also just kind of look at references of like how lightning works and what it would be doing, um, which is, you know, never a bad idea to get some reference happening. Yeah. Always going to be more advantageous for you. Um, but yeah. And That's cool. really now like that. I can probably also put some more of these kind of glares and flares happening on this just where these are kind of that's probably a bit much um just where these kind of lightning bolts are joining get a little bit more of that kind of look and feel going that's pretty cool that's awesome. um yeah and then I think we can also start thinking about like, you know, you can put a triangle behind this um, as well. So let's make a new shape. Let's go into our shape tool, choose a triangle, pop that in there. Oh, we're getting really and retro now with triangles. Yeah, yeah, super retro. Um, change the outline to like, a, I don't know, like a pink. There we go. Bang. Um, I'm happy with the thickness, but we can change the thickness of the stroke if we need to. And um, I just want to round this up a little bit as well, just to get a little bit more of an impact happening. That's good. There we go. And angle, bang. And I'm going to rasterize this as well because I want to tweak it like so. Oh, cool. I uh, probably should have done that 
before rasterizing it, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Do you ever turn them into like smart objects or? Um, you can do, but uh, again, that's probably like, to be honest, this is probably something that I should have thought about and done in um, Illustrator. Right, brought in a vector. Photoshop. Yeah, but yeah, that's, again, you know, something that you can kind of do as you're kind of working a little bit later on. Um, we can get some 3D effects happening here as well if we want to. So I'm going to put this on top of this layer here and we're going to go ahead and select. So select an object. You can kind of highlight that. Um, if you go on to something like this, if you hold down command and click on the layer thumbnail, it will automatically select everything that's like pixel in that layer. Um, so that's a nice kind of way to get something going a little bit more kind of easily. And nice. then because I'm just trying to get this guy looking like he's kind of going in front and behind at the same time. Um, so yeah, it's just a quick little impact thing that we can kind of do. And then we can get rid of that in there. So yeah, again, it, you know, this isn't like big and you can really go very quickly overboard with a lot of this stuff. If you start kind of adding like a million different things in, it can, it can get a little bit much very quickly and you can start to lose what it is that you're trying to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Um, and we can kind of do one last step here to make this give this a little bit more of an 80s feel. All right, I've right. only got about so two minutes left for us today, just a heads up. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so it's looking a little bit too smooth, a little bit too perfect and clean. We want that kind of 80s, a little bit lo-fi. So I'm going to select all of this stuff um, and I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E. And what that does is it's going to make a new um, layer from... Should be, come on. That scrunch Keep everything together. To do, uh, okay, doesn't like doing it. So I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. Command J and then Command E is gonna smash them all together. Yeah. There we go. Um, so again, I've just got all of my layers done flat. So you wanna do this at the end, right? You don't wanna do this when you're still doing some edits because this is now flat. I'm gonna go to filter, camera raw filter, and I'm just gonna give this a little bit of grain just to kind of roughen it up a little bit, make it look like a kind of an 80s kind of print vibe to it. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Hopefully I haven't crashed my computer. Pretty big yet. file. <laughs> Here we go. Um, when this stuff ever happens, it's file. also because you're go streaming. Into my... Yeah, it could be. And I'm just gonna add some grain to this and zoom in so we can see what it's doing. And you can see that grain starts to happen. That's awesome. Looks and so it good. just gives it a little bit of a more kind of like a rough vibe to it. I'm also going to dehaze it a little bit. And that's just going to boost the contrast and make it a little bit more kind of um, evident there. That's what that does. Um, I can change the size of the grain as well. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And so I'm going to hit return. And there we go. We've got a nice kind of like super uh, flashy, shiny, 80s style kind of um, effect on this text that we created in Illustrator with a whole bunch of different effects, lens flares, chrome, lightning. I don't really love this lightning. I'm gonna, I think I reckon I'm going to fix this later. But oh, yeah, I like the lightning. It. Okay. Perfectionist. But um, yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, we are out of time. Uh, there was so much fun. I was quite quiet today because I was just kind of following along and, and watching, I think, the same <laughs> as chat. Uh, super, super, super cool. Um, I love the smudging of the through. like chrome uh, reflection. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys saw that tip too. That was super great. Um, one of my favorites, something I had not seen ever before. But um, thank you everyone in chat for watching. Jeremy Lord, thank you so much for joining us again on Adobe Live and sharing everything you know. Thanks. It's been super fun as always. Um, fun to do something a little bit different today. Something a bit rad. It was super cool. Love the 80s stuff. Love the Chrome and the Hue and Sat uh, did make an appearance, which is always wonderful. <laughs> always.
All right, then. Uh, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, chat. And we'll be back next week for more Adobe Live, Asia Pacific. Bye. See ya.